hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel so we are back with part two of serving life in a foreign country and this time around she'll be telling us about the red flags she noticed why they were dating but because she was so much in love she has to ignore them and this is getting more and more juicy and i hope you guys enjoyed every bit of this video and let's get into this video you guys so part two of the menace saga um my ex will be referred to as the menace moving forward um because that's quite literally what he is and i just want to say before i get started with this part i am not putting all the blame on this person at the end of the day like i said i didn't follow my intuition i didn't follow my gut feelings and i did not look at the red flags this story time is quite literally going through everything that I freaking missed. While I take full accountability for the role I played in having this person in my life and for all the signs that I miss, I take full accountability for that. So for the comments that are already starting to come in, like you need to take accountability, my accountability is there. And that's why I'm doing this story time. And I'm doing this story time to quite literally help other people and to bring awareness to other people. So not to this comment or this commenter, but like, let's just not even go there. Like, don't even go there. Thanks. So to start with part two, as I already said, he worked for the mayor. That checked out. That was correct. Um, in the beginning, he said that he owned a house. Um and the house had flooded and that he that they were like working on repairing the house and the house was so big it had five bedrooms um and it was just too big for him and he was planning on putting the house up for rent and then like just using part of that money just for like a little apartment or something in the city um so that was like the story that i got in the beginning anyway come to find out that wasn't true he did not own a house and for accountability, I could have easily looked that up. I didn't. I just took what he was saying at face value. I really, quite literally, didn't think that someone could come into your life and lie as much as this person, like, lied. I was not even, like, thinking that at all. Like, I wasn't thinking that. Um, and so, anyway, um, he was living in a house, but it was not his house. It was someone else's house. And I think the story goes that person, the person who owned the house was actually putting the house up for rent again and had like put him out of the house or something. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know all the details about that story or I can't remember. I think at some point I may have known, but I can't remember. Um, and mind you also, all this, the way I'm telling you this story is hindsight. Hindsight is 2020. While I was going through the situation, I was not paying attention to everything that I know now, or I did not know everything that I currently know now. Everything was kind of taken at face value, like, because like, why would someone just be lying about everything? <laughs> I mean, everything. So, so once I started letting him come over to my house, it was kind of like he always wanted to be there. He never really left. My apartment building was a party building in the city. Like there were always parties. There were always house parties. There were always pool parties, rooftop parties, whatever the case may be. Um, so one day I like I worked two jobs. I had a day job and a night job. And um, I was at my night job. And I didn't know that the menace was like, still like just in my apartment building um so people were sending me videos and pictures of him being at a house party in my apartment building and initially i was just kind of like that's weird like and like people were like hey is it okay that he's here like <laughs> and i'm like um i mean that's kind of weird like why is he just hanging around at like my apartment complex but like again didn't really take it into consideration so when I got home this night, um, he is like rushing to come tell me a story. And mind you, I'm getting home at like 
2 a.m., maybe 3 a.m., I don't know. Um, he's rushing to come tell me the story about how this girl at this party was trying to talk to him, was, like, trying to get with him and was telling him that he was Polly, that she was Polly, basically insinuating that she wanted to be in a relationship with me and him at the same time. And, like, all this stuff that was not, like, I'm not comprehending. I'm like, what? Like, like, that's not even the type of vibes that I give off. So I don't understand why she would, like, be talking to you about that. You know what I mean? Like, I was just kind of like, what? So I was like, okay, well, let's go up to this party. Go up to the party. Nothing. Um, So the girl ends up texting me later. And she's like, hey, like, we need to talk. So she comes to me and she's like, hey, like, he made a lot of people feel uncomfortable at that party. He made a lot of women feel uncomfortable. He was very sexual. Um, He tried to follow somebody to their back to their room. Um he was just he just made people feel very uncomfortable and i really think you should like kind of reconsider like this decision on being with him like basically like long story short that's kind of what she was doing and so i was like okay took into account what she said and like in that moment when i was talking to her like i was already making the decision to not allow him back into my home into my home i was like first of all like you're not gonna have women feeling uncomfortable like you know like absolutely the fuck not and so i'm having this conversation with him and i go uh like you not like you're not about to be in my house having people uncomfortable like you you gotta go like pretty much and so then i go up um and i start having a conversation with some of my friends who were at the party and they were like t nothing happened the person who told you that she's been having a lot of problems in the building she has something going on she's starting drama with everybody nothing happened he was a lot of fun everybody was just having fun nothing happened at this party and this is multiple people telling me this at this point so now i'm kind of like okay well maybe she's just starting something like what the hell but no she was right um ended up like coming out that um later ended up coming out that he had actually at this particular party went into a bathroom another girl was in the bathroom trying to use the bathroom he went into the bathroom took his wee wee out while she was in the bathroom and starts using the bathroom while she's in there other things happened but these things didn't come out until later so also later, after all of this stuff happened to me, my friend ended up telling me, one of the friends that was telling me in the beginning that nothing happened at this party, he was like, you know, he was really weird at that party, but I just wanted to like support your decisions and I just didn't want to make it seem like anything was going on, but I probably should have told you that he was kind of weird. You are my friend. If I come to you and I ask you for your opinion on something, at any time you tell me the freaking truth like because i was already on the verge of like ending everything with this man based off of what she was saying and like never allowing him back into my home and then it was like you and my friends who were saying nothing happened so that <laughs> that was that um, but yeah, so he did try to apparently sexually assault some people at this party or it was just being really weird with them. And that comes about later because all of these things are like kind of like hints to like things that were going to get worse in my life later. Um, because I was sexually assaulted and we'll get into that in a, another story time that comes about a lot later. But yeah, my friends we're no help with that situation um he did try to follow someone to her apartment he did whip his wee wee out in front of somebody in a bathroom he was being sexually inappropriate with multiple women at this party but nobody came to me and came forth and said anything the majority said nothing happened he was a lot of fun he loves you like he really likes you i can see the way he looks at you like don't pay attention to what that girl said she's lying that's what the majority came to me saying but had i just listened to that girl <laughs> i would not be here i would not be here like so also mind you when they were telling me that this girl lies and not to listen to her not to believe her i'm instantly going into protect black men mode because now there is a person outside of my race who is accusing someone of 
being sexually inappropriate with women. And so now I'm like, all these people are saying, you're like, you're not about to do that to a black man. Mind you, hindsight's 2020. This is a black man that should have never in life been protected. He should have been put out. I should have never spoken to him again. But the majority said she was lying and he was fine. So protect black men never again. <laughs> Why you guys, I'll say it's about time you guys carry your popcorn because this story is getting more and more interesting and we're getting into it proper. When you meet someone who is a pathological liar, one thing I can bet you is that they will lie about everything. And the main reason why she wasn't paying much attention to his lies was because she was blindly in love with him and you guys know how when people are in love they turn blind and also deaf to so many red flags even when it's glaring them in the face let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below and i'll see you all in the next part